Hello and welcome to this Jane's Weather Update. It is Friday the 6th of September. We have a rain band. Here it is. It's coming down across these parts of South Australia at the moment, the southwestern parts of Victoria and into Tasmania with some lovely falls in through there. This is going to move in this direction, heading northeastwards, moving through inland parts tapering out a little bit as it, as it does move through there. We also have a high pressure system that is off the coast here directing hot air down into the southeast so it's very hot then cold as a cold front moves through. What that does is push moisture onto the central and northern Queensland coast otherwise we've got onshore airflow over in the southwest but this is the main feature of today. All right, what did we do in the last week? Not a lot in terms of rainfall if you were anywhere inland because we had cold front after cold front after cold front. We had a lot of heat that was here through the interior. Let's have a look at that one there. So all of this heat that was building in through here, but in terms of rain, we only had it at that south coast. That's because the cold fronts weren't able to extend inland at all. Huge falls in Tasmania, flooding in Tasmania, just hitting the coast here and then petering out as it headed inland. So that was over the last week. Things are looking a bit different this week. What do we have? High pressure that is sitting out through here. All of the heat over the interior is dragged down into the southeast. We've got colder winds that are coming into the southwest. We've got a cold front running in through here, a cut off low pressure system but that is south of the uh, mainland there and a trough snaking through here it has split the hives there is a little bit of access to tropical moisture this is nice news if you're looking for rain to travel not just to the coast but to head inland a little bit all right so let's take a look hello look at this map here it does actually have something that is not right at the coast in the south so we've got 10 to 15 millimeters in through these parts here that is the yellow coloring the lighter green coloring is 15 to 25 25 to 50 is the darker coloring in through here that is green and more of course for western parts of tasmania it does extend up in through here let's have a look at that day by day and a little bit of activity for the Queensland coast. Okay, so day one, which is Friday, here is our rain band. You can see it is gonna be moving inland. It does peter out a bit as it moves through these inland parts of South Australia and Western Victoria. It does affect the Eastern parts a little bit more going through Tasmania as well. Heading into Saturday, there's the remains of that rain band traveling inland. So going right through here into Western New South Wales and traveling in here. Then there's another little front to come through. So that one comes through on Sunday. Here's the remains of that rain band still moving in and in and in as it moves on. And then Monday, just the remains of that. Okay, so that's our first part of that. We've got that rain band very slowly moving through. And we've got a little follow up front just for the coast and ranges there. But next week, that's when we're going to see it. So here we have, this is next week. We've got another one coming through. It's going to start over in the west. It's going to have a feed of tropical moisture and it's going to head eastwards. And it's going to make it right through to these parts here. So this next week is something to keep an eye on. Okay, so here we have our precipitation. This is above or below average from the Euro model and it is for next week. So it's not the rain band coming through now into the weekend, it is next week's rain band. And this shows very clearly that it's not a coastal feature. This one is an inland feature. So it's starting in the west and it's working its way right on through. So this is great news if you have been missing out on some rain. In terms of temperature, we still have all of this heat that is over in the east here. As long as we've got that high pressure system there, it is dragging it down in here. But the rain, uh, the next area of rain coming through removes that heat and pushes this in. Now, let's have a look. First of all, this is week one beginning the 9th of September, so Monday the 9th. Let's move into the second week. Oh, there we go. Lots of activity that has moved into the east. So this is a big surge of tropical moisture coming down running into low pressure that becomes cut off from those fast westerlies to the south so it can meander at will just across very slowly bringing rain to anyone that is in its path so that moves on through and then continues over the east in the second week of what we're looking at here what does that do for temperature here we have our heat here we have our colder than average thanks to that rainfall moving into week two there it is moving into the eastern parts as well so this one here means that we're going to have currently we've got this big area of heat that's over the interior whenever you can get the winds pushing that out to the east or down into the southeast or over into the southwest then it is significantly above average mildura yesterday was 12 degrees above average thanks to those northerly winds and likely to be close to that today before the change comes through so it's just an example this means that we're losing that ball of heat that's over the interior 
thanks to that tropical moisture interacting with low pressure. Okay, let's have a quick look at Sam. About to take a spike up, that's what we're doing here. Here's our troughs and lows. Remember, this is only useful in the short term. The long-term forecasting of this is um, sketchy at best. So we're having a look at the first week here, which is our pulse into here, which is our cutoff low, which enables the access to that tropical moisture and then the slow move through from that rain system. Having a look at the MJO, that is our source of tropical moisture, and here it is moving into the green zone. So we've been here now. We didn't get that connection last week because it was fronts whizzing past and the highs had joined pretty much. There was only a tiny gap in between, so we couldn't access that tropical moisture. Now things are different. Having a look at which one is it here? It's this one. Having a look at this map up in through here where they have split. We've got that nice gap in the middle. That's what you're looking for to get rain moving down through the south. So we are accessing that through this one here. It's not a strong pulse, but it is on our side of the world. So we do like that. So yes, there is access to tropical moisture. It's some, but not a heap of it. Okay, let me look at the sea surface temperature anomalies. Here we have our boxes in the Indian and the Pacific Ocean. This one has expanded out here a little bit in terms of the blue, so that has gotten a little bit stronger. In the last couple of days, this has ramped up once again, so that went back to being fairly yellow, but this is a new feature just very recently. Okay, so having a look at our Indian, uh, sorry, at our Pacific Ocean Index, here is that moving down, that little bit more blue coming through. One, two, three models now have La Nina on the cards. We used to have one that dipped just down into here. That is not doing that anymore. Instead, it is up here in the, I'm gonna go close to that threshold, but I'm not going to cross it. So close, but no crossing is now two models and we have two models that are sitting in firmly neutral, so what it is right now. So these two models like us to continue as we are. These two models, instead of one how it used to be, like a, oh, it's going to get a little bit more but not quite go all the way, and these three models like it going all the way across that threshold. In terms of the Indian Ocean, hasn't picked up that blue that has been growing, but the modelling is. So these, all of these models are suggesting heading down in this direction, which is what that blue appearing out in that box is doing. So that's something to keep an eye on to see if we get just another little bit of action from the Indian Ocean. This one doesn't like it. Okay, uh, but we're nearing the end of when that has an influence on us because it just goes back into monsoon as we head towards summer. So just a little bit more that we might get from the Indian Ocean. Let's have a look at the outlooks. So this one is from the Weather Bureau. It is their latest one here. Just move this out of the way. So that was issued on the 5th, the run on the 2nd of September. And this is green. This is looking at October through to December. That would indicate that, yes, this is happening. It would also indicate that, sorry, head back to the Pacific one, that one, two, three models that really, really like it and the two that are close will have an impact. If you look at this, it's blue out here. It is yellow all through here. That's an imbalance. Cooler out there, warmer than average in through here. All of the cloud goes up, all of the moisture goes up on our side and then hopefully the atmosphere itself will kick into gear and follow what that uh, surface of the ocean is doing and push it in our direction. So that is indicating that there is a good chance that that will be happening. Our modeling shows that some of them like it, some of are close and others just remain where we are now. But having a look at that indicates that we should get a nice feed from the Pacific Ocean as we go through October through to December. That's the Bureau's take on it. Let's have a look at the Euro's take on it. This one here is September, October, November. I'll just move forward to October, November, December. And you notice there's a lot of green there. So that indicates that we have moisture being pushed in our direction. That moisture is part one of that rainfall equation. You then need the low pressure to meet up with it actually access that and turn it into rain for those that are in its path. But at least this shows us we have part one of that moisture equation in terms of that rainfall equation, which is the moisture. Okay, so Euro is on board, Australia is on board. Having a look at this one here, this is the USA model. They are not on board. I am looking at a lot of brown that is in through here. Yes, there is some green in these parts, so a lot of brown in through here, which is unusual. September, October, November, and October, November, December, even more brown heading into the red sort of zone. This is very different to what the other models are saying. Let's just have a look quickly at Canada, which is also definitely on board. We've got all of this green here, even blue, so significantly above average rain. That is Canada, that is Euro, and that is Australia 
that all like that above average rain. The only difference here is the USA model that isn't like it. Now this updates daily. So this one was run on the 5th of September at OOZ. Let's go and have a look at if it's been saying, if, is this a new thing? Have, has it been doing it for a while? Having a look at yesterday's run, and yeah, we've still got that there. Have a look at the day before. Yeah, we've still got that there. And we might even go back one more. And oh, there we go. There's a bit of green there. So this one is a daily model. So it can be influenced by other things. But the fact that we've got those three models that have a look once a month out and a long way that are all saying that, we also have this happening in the ocean and starting to actually grow the yellow of australia we've got these forecasts showing these three that are down through here those two that are close and those two that are sitting where it remains now this should indicate that one two and three are hopefully on the right track as to above average rainfall and this one here which is the usa is hopefully a bit of an anomaly we'll keep an eye on what this one is doing okay let's whip around the country to see this rain band in action starting in brisbane where there is no rain band we're looking at uh sunshine for the next couple of days as we move through monday tuesday wednesday next week that's when wet weather returns so let's just jump through to monday We've got a storm icon on there in the afternoon and evening and lasting into Tuesday with a cooler temperatures coming in as well. Having a look here, 20, 40%, 60%, 80%, that's all models that like this one. So it's Monday, Tuesday that wet weather returns to the Brisbane area. Having a look at Sydney and surrounds, here we have our hot and gusty winds. We've got our hot temperatures heading for 29. When is the cool change due? Here it is. You can see it in the winds here. We've got our northwesterly and then we've got a gusty southerly coming up. So it's about 8, 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. So Sydney, that is when the warm weather comes to a grinding halt when that cold front moves on through. And there is just a little bit of wet weather as we move through the late afternoon and evening into tomorrow, then back to dry conditions. In Melbourne, buckle up. We have got a lot going on here. So warm windy that's our northerly winds that we've got here the latest guidance has us peaking about 25 that is around lunchtime the cool change is due about two in the afternoon temperatures plummet after that one if you're going to the footy tonight and you're going wow it's really warm out there it is not going to remain that way it is going to be more like 16 15 14 degrees while you're at the footy and it comes with a lovely bit of rain but at least the winds will ease so we've got the red gustiness here and we've got lighter winds by the time we move into the evening so warm and windy turning cold and wet it doesn't last it eases in the early hours of the morning as you go into saturday bright sunshine lovely we've got light to moderate winds and then the chance of some showers as we go into the evening more showers coming in on sunday afternoon and evening not much hanging around for monday and then tuesday into wednesday is the break before that next rain system comes through having a look at this 0 to 11 millimetres, 1 to 20 millimetres, 0 to 9 millimetres. Lots of rain here coming through Melbourne and going back to this map in through here, I'll just, sorry about your eyes for a second, we'll go down to that 5 to 8 day. These are some nice falls that are extending inland too. So that's what we're looking at in the southeast. Quickly moving into Adelaide here, the rain is there today, the cooler temperatures are there and we take a break and tomorrow 17 and then 16. So the warmth that we had in Adelaide is now gone and the rain band has moved in. Over in Perth, what's happening there? We've got just these showers coming in on those southwesterly winds and it's definitely on the cool side but not as chilly as it was two days ago when the big front came through. Lots of sunshine on the horizon and warming up once again. That's it from me here on Friday the 6th of September. I'll have more for you next week on Friday and we'll see what that long-term outlook lo looks like. Euro, Canada, Australia, all like above average rain. USA does not. Let's see if that lingers. I'll see you next week. Bye.